Hi friends, welcome back. In this video, we are going to design and implement an important digital design which is event detector. So we are going to basically design the circuit for event detector as well as we are going to write its HDL code. So in this video, first we are going to design the First, we are going basically going to understand the event detector functionality and we will design its circuit diagram. In the next video of the event detector series, we are going to write the HDL code. We are also going to synthesize the design and simulate it. So let's get started. So these are the following points we are going to cover in this series of an event detector design. So in this particular video, we are going to first understand the event detector and we are going to design the circuit diagram for this event detector. So now let's understand what is the event detector. So if you see, if you can see here, this is the block diagram of this event detector, which has data in as the input data and one clock and it is outputting an event which is event out signal. Now let's understand the functionality of this event detector through the waveform. So how this event detector is going to function is like this. So we have the clock and we have the data in. So if you can see here, the data in is basically toggling intermittently and whenever the data in is basically either rising as is happening or whenever there is a falling as is happening, you can see here that the event out is basically going high for one clock cycle. So if you see here the data in went from 0 to 1 at this clock edge and the event out also basically went from 0 to high and it is high for this complete clock edge and then it became low. So whenever there is a rising edge, the event out or the event detector is basically generating one plus of one clock cycle. So if you see here, this is happening both at rising edge as well as falling edge of this data in. So falling edge, whenever there is a falling edge in that particular time as well, the event out is going high and it is remaining high for one clock cycle and then it is becoming low. If you see here, the data in went high at this clock edge, the event out also went high. Now, if you see here, the data in again became low at this, the next clock edge, the data in basically going from high to low. So that is also an basically it is a falling edge. So whenever there is a rising edge or falling edge, our event detector is expected to generate one clock cycle pulse. So how so 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 here the event out is remaining high for the next clock cycle as well because at this clock edge the transition happens from high to low for the data in signal. Here the transition again happened and here the transition again happened. So our event out is basically going to be high for four clock cycles consecutively because the data in each toggling at each clock cycle. So hope you understood the functionality of this event detector. Now let's see how we can implement this event detector what is the circuit sitting inside this event detector which will function like the waveform shown here.
So here we are taking basically taking two scenarios. One is if the data in is synchronous to the clock one domain, or if the data in is asynchronous to clock one domain. So if you have to understand, you have to. This is very important point here. So the event detector basically. So if you see here in the block diagram, the event detector is basically functioning functioning at this clock. Let me change this to clock one, so it will be same in both block diagram and circuit diagram. So if you see here, the event detector is basically functioning at clock one. But here we don't know from which clock domain this data in signal is coming. So let's take two scenarios. The data in signal is synchronous to this clock one, or the data in signal is asynchronous to the clock one. So here basically we are going to have two scenarios. One is when the data in is asynchronous to the clock one domain, or when the data in is synchronous to the clock one domain. So let's first consider that when the data in is synchronous to the clock one domain. So whenever the data in is toggling, it is toggling at the rising edge of this clock domain. So now let's understand the functionality of this circuit. So if you can see here in starting, the data in is low. So when in starting the data in is low, the output of the D flip flop is zero, and the data in is also zero. And when the both inputs of the XOR gates are same, the output is zero. Now let's add this clock edge. At this clock edge, the data in becomes high. The data in becomes high, but what will be the output of this flip flop, which is the second input of the XOR gate? At this clock edge, the flip flop samples. The value of the data in which is just before the clock edge, which is zero here. So at this clock edge, the flip flop will sample its value zero only. And now during this clock cycle, the flip flop output value is going to be zero, and hence the one input of the XOR gate is high and another one is low, and we will get a high pulse at the output of the XOR gate. Now at this clock edge, the data in is high, so now the flip flop will sample the value just before this clock edge, and the value will be one. So the flip flop output is also one, the data in also one, and the output of the XOR gate will become zero. Similarly, at this clock edge, at this clock edge, the data in is basically going from high to low, but what will be the output of this flip flop? The output of this flip flop will be one only because the flip flop will sample the value just before this clock edge, so that value is one. So the output of this flip flop is going to be one. So during this clock edge, the flip flop output is going to be one, but the data in has become zero. So the output of the XOR gate will be high. So this is the basically circuit diagram of this event detector. Now let's see the second scenario where we don't know. So because basically we don't know from which domain the data in is coming, and that is why we have taken two scenarios. One is if the data in is synchronous to the clock one domain. So when the data in is, is data in is synchronous to the clock one domain, we have seen the circuit behavior. Now if the data in is Asynchronous to the clock one domain. Let's see what will happen. So, if you see here in the waveforms, data in is basically toggling here at this at the falling edge of this clock. Before this falling edge of the clock, data in is zero. So, when data in is zero, then at this rising edge of the clock, when flip flop samples the input value, the flip flop output is zero. But here the data in became high. So at this edge, if we see the data in has become high, well, but the flip flop output is zero only because the flip flop is going to sample the next value at this clock edge. So now 
we will get a small half cycle pulse here okay now if you see the data in is basically falling here because this is data in is we are we are assuming that it is asynchronous to the clock one domain and it can toggle at any time so if the data in is toggling at this time basically it is going from high to low so at at this time if you see at this rising age the flip flop output is has become one because it has sampled the data in value as one now here in between the data in has become low so the input of the xor gate are now opposite at this point of time so it, till the next rising edge of the clock we will have the opposite value of, at the uh, xor input and we, we are be, we, we will be getting a pulse here which is basically larger than the previous pulse so basically if the data is asynchronous to the clock one domains then we won't get a proper one cycle pulse so this is basically not expected in the digital designs because here the output of the event detector is it is basically is basically a glitchy output where the pulse of the output is not uniform so this will basically cause unexpected results in the design so this kind of design is not expected so now what we have to do now if the data in is asynchronous or basically if we don't know if the data is synchronous or asynchronous to our clock domain where our event detector is working we basically have to introduce a synchronizer at this data time so that we can make sure that whatever the output of the synchronizer which will be always synchronous to this clock domain so now let's see how we can do that so here i have basically added a 2d flip flop synchronizer so if you want to know the functionality of the synchronizers or why do we need synchronizers in digital designs what is meta stability if you want if you want to know these kind of concepts please let me know in the comment section and i will cover in some of the upcoming videos so if we synchronize synchronize this data in signal here then let's see how the result are going to be so here if you see the data in has toggled here so when the data in will now you have to see that there are two d flip flops inserted here in the path of this data in so when the two d flip so d flip flops are added here the input here sync data in sync data in is basically two clock cycle delayed version of data in okay so here if you see the data in is going is changing basically here so the expected clock pulse was during this clock cycle okay but the clock pulse is basically getting generated here which is basically one or two clock cycle after two clock cycle delay but here it will make sure the synchronizer will make sure that the data in is synced with respect to the clock one edge and the event detector will always output a one clock cycle pulse so if you see here the pulse is always one clock cycle pulse so hope this event detector design is clear to you if you have any doubts please write, write down in the comment section and the hdl design of this event detector both for asynchronous scenario or syn or synchronous scenario we are going to cover in our next video so if you like the content please hit the like button also please do subscribe this channel and enable the notification so that you will get notified as soon as i upload the 
next video on this event detector design series thank you very much